We have continued to press energy to explain the catastrophic transmission failure it experienced in Hurricane Ida when the storm knocked out all eight high voltage lines carrying electricity into the New Orleans area. Here's my exchange with Entergy Louisiana CEO Philip May during a conference call Thursday morning. Could you go down the list of what those failures were on those eight corridors coming in? I can get that for you, David. I can tell you generally what it is. We had trees on lines, oftentimes trees outside of a right-of-way blown into the transmission system. We had additional debris, debris on line. We had towers that failed just from wind fields and so forth. The chairman of the elected state board that regulates energy outside the city of New Orleans wants to know more, too. The money that they'd set aside for transmission monitoring upgrades that they said they were going to allocate to that, did they and how? Louisiana Public Service Commission Chairman Dr. Craig Green sent this letter to President Joe Biden, asking him to dedicate federal money to strengthen Entergy's grid. But what does the most resilient transmission grid look like and how much will it cost? It is the perfect storm that it knocked out all eight? I can't tell you more until we look into it as to why. Entergy reports spending $4.2 billion since 2014 on expanding its transmission system. May says newly built or restored towers and wires, as well as strengthened substations where electricity is converted for distribution to homes and businesses, are engineered to withstand 150 mile per hour winds. The highest gusts measured by the National Weather Service in Dulac only reached 120 knots or 138 miles per hour. And what about this major transmission tower in Avondale? It collapsed in winds nowhere close to that. Next door in Wagaman, the National Weather Service reported maximum winds of 80 knots or 92 miles per hour. We found the tower the day after Ida riddled with rust. So why wasn't it upgraded? Those are some of the questions we're going to ask. I know in Laura, the ones they when they replaced the transmission structures, they were replaced with more modern, more sturdy, more wind resistant ones. So the analysis will be, well, why wasn't that one? We asked that very question to Entergy's May. He said the tower was inspected at the end of last year and didn't need any upgrades. So, so like that tower was very robustly engineered. We're not going to go in and proactively replace a tower like that. I mean, that is a enormously expensive engineered structure. Entergy's New Orleans subsidiary is regulated by the New Orleans City Council. Council President Helena Moreno said she wants to make sure customers are not stuck with a bill for equipment failures Entergy could have prevented. I think that um, at times the company may think that, that, that their regulator should be uh, an additional mouthpiece for them, but that is not our role. Our role is to watch out for the people of this city. And so that's what um, that's what we on this council will continue to do. Both Green and Moreno sent Entergy letters last week demanding more accountability, something both say they'll be demanding next year when the utility presents the bill for Hurricane Ida restoration. David Hammer, Eyewitness News.